Hi there, I'm Heidi. I'm the founder of The First Aid Nest and this video today is going to be about asthma first aid. So asthma is a chronic respiratory condition where you can sometimes have it from childhood, sometimes that can develop in adulthood, um, but it's a condition where your airways respond um, badly uh, to usually there's a trigger, whether it be exercise or an allergen or something along those lines. Sometimes, unfortunately, people can be triggered by they don't know what. But basically what happens is it's kind of a threefold thing that happens with asthma. It's the airways become quite swollen. So um, when an airway becomes swollen, it becomes smaller inside. Um, the other thing that happens is that there's more uh, mucus production. So inside the airway, there's a lot more mucus, which also is obviously um, prevents the air from getting through properly. And the other thing that happens is there's some smooth muscle that's kind of wrapped around the outside of the airway and that constricts. OK, so you've got the constriction, you've got the mucus build up and you've got the inflammation of the airways. Now, this can all create this kind of symptom. So the mucus build up and the small airway can create that wheeze. Obviously, the airway is very irritated. That's where the cough can come from. Um, and asthma can become, it can be quite mild, meaning those symptoms is not as much mucus, is not as much inflammation. Um, but obviously in worst case scenario, the airway can become pretty much completely blocked. And that is um, obviously a life threatening asthma. But an asthma attack is where the person gets to the point where they just, they can't speak a full sentence. They can't catch their breath. They've got a persistent cough usually, but sometimes there's no noise at all, which is even more worrying because there's just not a lot of air entry coming in and out. So you can't really hear the air entry. Um, so the way that asthma is usually managed, because it can be very successfully managed your whole life. Um, people normally have either a blue inhaler, just a blue inhaler, which means that their asthma is intermittent. It doesn't usually interfere with everyday life. Um, they just take it as and when they need it, but usually just sporadic, maybe once a week, maybe once a month, you know, but no more than that. Um, the reliever inhaler acts a bit like adrenaline. It opens up things. So it, it mimics adrenaline in a way. And it's usually called Ventolin or Salbutamol, and it's in a blue inhaler. Um, so that's your reliever medication. And when you take it, you should take it with a spacer, whether you're an adult or a child. Um, and that just allows the medication to you get more medication basically that way than just taking it without the space so you can take it without the space so just make sure that you practice a good technique um and if you're not sure then ask your gp or your pharmacist about that technique um the other medication that is commonly used in asthma is called a steroid inhaler there are lots of different types of steroid inhaler and there's some mixtures of steroid and ventolin type inhalers as well but that's what we call the um, the preventative medication. So what that does is it keeps at bay the symptoms. It calms the um, the inflammation from happening in the first place. So it's more something that you have to take regularly to keep those symptoms at bay and it can keep people much better managed. Um, so they have to take much less Ventolin, if any at all, but it's something that has to build up and it's something that has to be given on a on a regular basis every single day, sometimes once or twice a day. Um, so what should we do with asthma first aid? So if we come across someone with any of the symptoms that are in this blog post um, with the severe or moderate asthma symptoms, um, we should be monitoring them, making sure they have their asthma puffer with them. Um, if someone is having severe symptoms of an asthma attack and they don't have their puffer with them, we should call the ambulance straight away. OK, so we normally do when someone has severe symptoms of an asthma epi episode and we're waiting for the ambulance to come, we need to do what we call the 444. So we want to sit the person down and make sure, try and keep them as calm as possible. And we want to give them four puffs of the Ventolin inhaler through a spacer if you have it. And then we want them to do four breaths in and out through the spacer per puff. OK, so in total, they're going to have four puffs and 16 breaths in and out. OK, then we're going to wait four minutes. So this is where the 444 comes in. We're going to wait four minutes. If the symptoms are the same or worse, we're going to do the same again until help arrives. OK, and we're just going to continue to do that unless the person starts to recover. Then we're still going to wait for the ambulance for them to be checked. Or if the person gets worse and they're not breathing normally or not breathing at all, we're going to lay them down on the floor and start CPR. 
okay? So I hope this has been helpful for you today. You know where we are, you can leave comments below. We can always contact us through our website. Okay, take care.